From 1944, we head to 2022, from Jamala at Eurovision to Jamala as a juror. Vidbeer 2022 took place last night in Ukraine. The winner was Alina Pash. The song was Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors. Davon! <laughs> hey, William. Sorry for that long introduction. I loved it! <laughs> Are you ready to talk about it? Let's do this! was a mouthful, but we had to shout out Tina Carroll was on the jury. Mm. Huge star, as you know. <laughs> Tina Carroll is like a massive deal. She used to judge on The Voice. What was her song at Eurovision? 2006. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the song. It wasn't, you know, that's not her best song. Let's just say that. <laughs> All right. Hitting play on Alina Posh. That certainly came through. That applause is intense. <laughs> They're ready for her. Ooh. Okay, folklore. A beautiful dove. Ooh, that dove is lit. Folklore. She's intense. She's gorgeous. Oh, that's staging. Her eyes are broken apart. This is how you draw someone in. This is, this is, this is national costume. Big time. Nothing wrong with some pride. It's great. Strong red lip. Oh yeah. This reminds me of, um, what's that Polish, Tulia's um, yeah. type of staging. This has great emotional depth already. Do you feel it? It's like, She has fuego in her eyes. Oh, there's English. She's gorgeous. I like this beat. Oh, uh, it's amazing. Her arms here, her head here. She's embracing the stage. Shadows of our forgotten ancestors. ancestors. This is beautiful. Oh, girl. My folks are best described in writings of Juma. One for all and all for one. Nowadays, Dante would have written the divine tragedy. But we need Picasso's doll. It's the divine strategy. And my childhood girls played with toy dolls. But I wrote these words here. Because my favorite toy was a book of Shakespeare. Just like the brothers scream, I leave behind a piece of me. Remember your ancestors. I write your own. Yeah. 1944 revisited. This is good. The intensity. When strangers are coming. She overcomes. They come to your house. She fights. Strong woman. And they kill you all. Strong people. We are not guilty. This staging is amazing. It's a moment. Every shot is memorable. Because she's so gorgeous. She's like so beautiful. Are those projections on them? This also reminds me of Marmo, Russia 2009. Yeah. Like there's, you know, something. But she's staying young and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And there's Ukraine, the map. I see Crimea, just in case Jamala asks. Okay, wow, that dub of peace was. Is that Crimea? It's right there. Feels enlarged. Okay, wow. Let's, <sighs> I gotta tell you, the lyrics are available on the Can Wee Can we Wee actually go into that? Because that gives it context. Okay, the lyrics are available on the Wee Wee Vlogs website. I was, as I was about to say, <laughs> Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors. Long story short, she says you need to remember your ancestors, remember their history and struggles, which allowed you to live, but don't let the past conflict define you. Write your own history. She mentions the Divine Comedy at one point, saying that Ukraine had such a troubled past that Dante could have written, you know, the Inferno about Ukraine. Um, she essentially talks about, you know, remembering the strength of the past, carrying it with you, going forward, and slaying. Now, Sankofa. Now, obviously, you could apply this in a contemporary context. 
Ukraine has, of course, been in deep struggles, you know, since 2014, you know, if not before. Um, and we're not out of that vortex. We're not. And of course, with recent news, I don't want to go too much into this, but recent news about potential invasions, talk of intelligence saying invasions are coming, denials of invasions. There's just a lot going on in the atmosphere. And this taps into the zeitgeist. And, you know, you cannot deny current events shaping how you react to certain songs. And I think that, to be fair, Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors moves me a lot more now because I'm aware of what's going on politically more than I would have been, let's say, you know... Do, do, Am I making sense? Yes, the song could be interpreted as coming at a time of great threat. And therefore, in the face of threat, people do reflect on their life, their past, their history, and what kind of future they want. Now, we ain't getting political. We're just stating facts. No, we're not. Because we're just actually, stating facts. The, the, the example I'm drawing from is Aneda Tarifa's Kengabashi entry, where, I mean, she... she didn't predict an earthquake, did she? But, no, but, she... It, but it happened. The earthquake happened. And suddenly that song had a lot more meaning for a lot of people, right? Yeah. And I think abstracted from all of that, if you're just watching this, it taps on Ukrainian folklore. It's beautiful. You feel this is rooted in a place. It's rooted in a time. Ukraine does what they want to do at Eurovision from Go A to Jamala. It's about authenticity and keeping it real. This feels real, and yet it also feels contemporary with that spoken word rap section. I think she should work on her enunciation there. It was good. I heard, actually heard what she said. Oh, I understood mm -hmm. it, but it needs to be a bit more fluid, and she, mm -hmm. she'll improve on that with time. Um, I think this is strong, and I do think you could see a 1944 effect at Eurovision. And I, what I mean by that is that songs that type, type, tap, forgive me, tap into the zeitgeist can speak to people from all over the place. In Alina's defense, what I will say is this, that Ukraine, again, what William said, traditionally does what it wants. And, you know, this, she's not playing up to current events because, I mean, let's just assume Go A had gone this year also you could link it to the current narrative as well because yeah. you know especially with the music video with the army tanks mm. and, you know you could you could build a narrative around what's currently going on and i feel like this song is authentic to her her delivery was a little bit angry because it mm -hmm. meant a lot and it was weighted on her and whilst this is not a song that i would naturally gravitate towards i love it because it it frames the current narrative. Does that make sense? Oh, I totally understand. Because we are impacted. We can't separate ourselves from the times we live in, you know? And Eurovision winners so often tap into something in the air. And it, it's because if art reflects reality, it feels more real. Mm. You know what I mean? And so we can have argument, you know, for days. Oh, is it personal? Is it political? Well, the personal can be political. So Jamala, Jamala never lied. She said her song was personal. That don't mean it's not political. Exactly. <laughs> you know? But it was personal. Um, But... And with a notable exception of TikTok. I mean, Ukraine does come with very serious entries. They have something to say at Eurovision. And this year is no Oh, different. TikTok was no... You can read some seriousness into that. You know, black for death. Red for Blood. I remember Taking in the time bomb. In the, yeah, in the rehearsal, I remember there were. Yeah, in any case, that's a separate story. In the rehearsal. I, I don't want to go there. In the rehearsal! But what I will say is this has many memorable moments. The bird at the beginning, the bird at the end. <laughs> This is, of course, Picasso's Dove of Peace. It's a symbol of peace. Um, it's just the way she emotes, it's so arresting. And, you know, again, I always say this, but people are drunk at a party here in London and they hear the woman, you know, making bird noises. They stop and they listen and they remember. And the outfit, it's traditional. Some people will take the hat as a bird's nest because there seems to be some stuff in it. But it's a beautiful traditional outfit. I love the hair. I just... I think Al Alina Pash is just incredibly beautiful she is so stunning to look at and yeah while i don't care for the bird noises it goes to show that she uses her voice as an instrument to con convey the message and you know if you're talking about shadows of forget forgotten ancestors you know it's kind of rooted in history and time and you know i think bird imagery is also part of ukrainian culture yeah this i think i'm just gonna call it now this has top five potential i do i think 
The staging is so well done. I love her eyes on those screens broken apart from one another. I love her head at the back, her arms kind of enveloping the stage. It's just very thoughtful. And Ukraine, again, we've seen them. They are masters of staging. Their Go A live on tape video was iconic. It was iconic. I have no doubt, I have no doubt this will slay at Eurovision if it goes to Europe. It will go to Eurovision, sorry. I have no doubt this will slay at Eurovision. Oh, we cannot divorce our current findings from historical patterns. And I think that, you know, Ukraine's perfect qualification record does lend itself to that, you know, to that point of view. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go A, I went through a, a very sort of, you know, um, yeah, a turbulent journey, you know, loving and then also hating in equal measure. So. Oh, I love Go A, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely love them. I liked the 1.0. I didn't like, uh, you know, I didn't like the. <laughs> they still came second in the yeah, tumble boat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ukraine has just a lot working in its favor. I think, you know, at Eurovision, they, they know how to reach out to people. They just get it. And the, the, that stage show last year, this stage show on the smaller stage in Ukraine, imagine what they can do in Torino. I have tingles. I, this, she's an artist. She's an artist. Oh, definitely. Not a pop star. Oh, definitely. Artist. Definitely. Wow. Definitely. And she has a lot to say. Ad Nama has a lot to say. She says, Ukraine is incredible. This country never disappoints. So unique and moving. Not all age groups will get this and some juries will be skeptical, but Ukraine's staging skills should be acknowledged. The staging potential of this, unlimited. Mm. Love unlimited, baby. <laughs> Love, Love unlimited. <laughs> How did that shape up for them? <laughs> hey, <laughs> they had no staging. Ukraine will give us staging. This is on the Wibby Blogs website. ESC Addict writes, first serious contender of this year for me. Great job, Ukraine. I know Alina would slay and she did it. The performance was powerful and emotional. The start and the end of the song are impactful. I mean, at the beginning, when you hear these bird noises, you're intrigued instantly. And in Eurovision, you have to stand out, but at the same time, remain yourself and show your culture to the world. Ukraine has very well understood that. Ukraine is the best ESC country easily for me. Everybody's always talking about the same country. Sweden, Italy, but Italy brings good songs. Not always, but generally, but zero stagings. Sweden brings good stagings, but average songs. Ukraine brings both great songs, great stagings, period. Yes. Well, and you know, the, the, the other thing about Alina Pasha's entry is that, you know, sometimes if you look at, if you look at the driving force behind songs and you think, okay, we want to see we want songs to be selected by the ministries of culture in all <laughs> the respective countries. This seems like, okay, this is our cultural presentation. This this feels authentic. This is not a song bought from, like, a Swedish composer. No. This is self-composed and, yeah. se you know, self-expressed. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, and I feel like it's authentic to her, and I give her props for that. I love this entry, William, because of what's happening now. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure I can artic I would have articulated that if the current events were not taking place. Yeah, we live in the world we live in. It's not your fault. Like, this is the world we live in and <laughs> you, people respond. You can't turn off the news, can you? It's, you know, it's, it's around. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Is Ukraine headed for a top five at Eurovision again? Do you love the authenticity of this? Do you love Alina's voice? And what about those bird noises? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. If Alina Pash was on Pinterest, what would you expect to see? Epic folklore images, you know, the history of her nation, beautiful woven carpets, beautiful dresses, um, but also sort of edgy art because she's at once honoring the past but doing something artistic. Spoken word rap, maybe some Eminem posters. I don't know if she's into Missy Elliott. You know, I think there could be a lot going on because she's drawing on so much. This is a different trajectory. When you were in Ukraine, did you hear the sound of beauty? I saw the sound of beauty. I mean... Or you can see sound. You can... Synesthesia. Yes. <laughs> senses can cross. You can taste music. You can see smells. You can smell taste. It all works together, girl. Oh, wow. Well, there you have it. Follow us on Pinterest and we will <laughs> we'll see, see you later. later.